The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, folks, this is the 6th, 17th of October in the year of our Lord, 2022. I want to go back into history. First of all, I posted a chart of the uh, E-mini S&P showing you where we were Sunday night coming in exactly at the 61% retracement. I mean, it was so, it was within two points, folks, on a contract that's worth a hundred and some thousand, hundred and fifty some thousand dollars. So it's, uh, it is really quite accurate. As you can see, we went up and we made the 78% level at 37.02. We rallied 110 handles and we've been going back and forth uh, ever since that time. Let's go over history just a little bit because for me, this was one of the most emotional days of the year in my whole life it was actually the 16th uh, was Friday Friday the 16th of October 1987 and I had just covered my my positions actually I didn't have to cover them they just expired worthless I, I bought some puts on October the 2nd and I covered them on the 16th they were way out of the money when I bought them and they were way in the money when I when they expired and it was one of the largest it was the single largest percentage gain on an investment that I ever made. I put ten, ten thousand dollars into those puts on the second of October of 1987, and I cashed out with about two hundred and twenty thousand on the 16th, right on the low tick with the Dow down 106 points. I was happy as a lark. I just, uh, I was able to cover uh, all my daughter's education back east, and so that made it worthwhile. Uh, then that following, uh, that following Saturday, there were all kinds of weddings that uh, I had to attend. Uh, one of them uh, was on Sunday when Eddie Horowitz got married down in uh, uh, the Beverly Hills Country Club. Peter Lighty was there. PQ Wall. There were just a whole lot of people there. And uh, Eddie toasted to all the people that didn't listen to him because the crash was going to come tomorrow on the 19th of October. And by golly, he sure had that right. And their anniversary will be tomorrow. And I always remember it because, my gosh, it was a, certainly an emotional day. Folks, I don't know if a crash is going to come or not. All I know is that it was set up today to do exactly that. All it had to do was to gap down. And when the when the British pound did not go down on bullish news, uh, excuse me, on bearish news, boy, that was something. It actually opened higher. In fact, when the markets opened higher, I did something that I don't usually do. And that is at that time, I put up a beautiful uh, charts of the things that were happening on Sunday night, showing them which markets were doing what and where the 382s might be and stuff like that. And the most important thing I said was, you know, we didn't go down on you know, bad news, and that means, you know, be really careful here. We're probably getting ready to rally, and by golly, we had a little bit of a rally, and away we went uh, to the upside, and it didn't take very long to get it started, and then it accelerated as we got through the middle of the night when it appeared that the folks over in the U.K. had was coming out with Jeremy Hunt, their new chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, and uh, he was going to write, and he is very, he's, he's Oxford-trained, folks. He knows to put all the words in the right places so he is really a smooth dude and so uh, we'll be able to follow him through the years if he lasts more than two weeks over there but we'll have to wait and see uh, if that in fact occurs now folks markets go up and down all the time so you know you don't have to be excited just because they do one or the other because it doesn't take long for them to move and they get overbought and oversold and as we know we live in interesting times which is the Chinese curse, and that is something that we really have to pay, you know, close uh, close attention to him. Our guest today is hopefully going to be Mil Bill Meridian, if we can reach him. Uh, he was supposed to be on at one o'clock, but evidently he's been delayed a little bit. Hopefully, we'll have him on in just a little bit, and we'll be able to uh, see uh, what's going on with Bill. Now, I wanted to bring another chart up here. 
to talk to you about, and that is a chart of Pepsi. Someone's asked us to talk about Pepsi Cola, and I'll get this up here. Personally, I'm not a Pepsi man. I'm a Coca-Cola man. And let's get this up here and take a look at it. Here it is right here. And you can see here uh, the question that the gentleman had. This is a weekly chart of Pepsi. And if you'll notice here, you have three drives to a top pattern. You have drive one here, drive two here, and drive three right here. Now, if this top would have been just a little bit lower so that it didn't get any higher than this one, that would have made it a butterfly pattern. That's the difference between a three drive to a top pattern and a butterfly. The middle one has to be higher. Number one has to be higher than number three, and that's what you have to look at. So that is a three drive to a top pattern. And as you can see, uh, on the way up, we make a beautiful ABCD finishing up in here. We've broken down, and we've had a tremendous rally here these last few weeks here in Pepsi going up to a little right about the 61% retracement. So that's what it looks like uh, with Pepsi. So let's uh, pay attention to these things, and then we should be – we should be okay, and I think we'll be all right. Okay, now let's move on here and take a look at another one that we want to be watching, and that is the chart that Larry Williams sent to us about, oh my goodness, uh, two weeks, two or three weeks ago. I posted it in here warning us of the fact that we were looking at a market that was so oversold that it was oversold more than ever. I mean, going back. 45 years, folks, going back into 1980, when the market bottomed right down here. You remember who was elected in 1980, right? Jimmy Carter left and uh, Mr. Reagan came in. Well, that's how low the market was at that time, and we have taken that out. That's how look at it. So we are so oversold long term that we could get one heck of a rally in here, and we're getting it right now. We could easily go up. I don't think we could make new highs in here because I think, you know, the overall economy – looking at the technical cycles and stuff, has really uh, uh, changed a great deal. Now, let's talk about the market just a little bit in terms of what it's really all about, and that's about money. And money is reflected in you-know-what, folks, the U.S. dollar and all the currencies that are involved with the U.S. dollar, and including the British pound and the euro, which is 50% of the 53% of the dollar index. And that's what you're looking at here. You can see here we made that 78% level up here. We completed the A, B, C, D absolutely perfectly there at the 1.618. Okay, and now we've come down and we've rallied up seven days, stopping at the 78% level. And it's gotten hammered today because the pound took off, the euro took off, everything took off, even the Australian dollar which has been really been hit really badly, made a long-term bottom in the weeklies uh, for the Australian dollar. Just if, well, listen, I think I can bring that up to show the folks what it really did, and that would be fun to look at because we we got a break coming up here. That'll give us a chance to uh, put the chart up and then also give us a chance to uh, get ready for our next segment. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we've got Bill Meridian of Cycles Research on the line to continue his program that we had on Friday. Bill, do you want to continue, please? Yeah, hi, Larry. Can you hear me How okay? How are you doing, buddy? Okay, Go you right can ahead. hear me okay, I presume. You're coming in perfect, my friend, just like uh, we're on a spaceship or something or a satellite dish. Go ahead, buddy. Okay, let me figure out how to share screen again. Here it is right here. So you've questions? got my screen? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think we're. I think they think we're okay. Just let me double check with Al, and uh, he should tell us. He's nothing coming up yet, but uh, yeah, you're you're up and running, buddy. Fire away. You're ready to go. Okay. Well, when we we left off, let's see over here with the dollar, which I think will remain strong. Um, but I always uh, get a good feel or a read from looking at the auction markets. Because, as I've said before, in New York in the 80s, they said uh, they used to say that cocaine is nature's way of telling you you have too much money. Well, the auction markets are telling us that there's way too much money in the economy. So excessive credit creation distorts the markets. These markets are the economy's way of telling us there's too much money around. And great excesses signal tops of bubbles. So, Larry, we've been in the wrong business all these years. The PWCC 100 is um, baseball cards. Oh, God, yeah. And you see the S&P 500 at the bottom, and you see the baseball card index at the top in blue. Wow. So there, there's so much money available that money has spilled over out of the equity markets, the bond markets, the real estate, cryptocurrencies, and into virtually – if you own anything physical, it's probably up in value. So here's the um, – actually, it was, it was supposed to be – oops, new yeah, computer. You know, a, a, Michael, a Michael Jordan uh, jersey from the 1995 yep, champion went for $4 million for a jersey. Whew. And I think a, a Mickey Mantle baseboard card I think went for seven, wow. if I remember correctly. But anyway, one of the reasons I, I'm uh, – I'll talk about the market in a minute, but bearish on the economy is because – uh, the real estate cycle, which is – I presented this before, and it's 18 years long. And the last time in 2006, I think I advised everyone, if you've got any real estate, because it is a liquid, it takes time to sell, make sure you've completed your transactions by June 30th. That was 2006. 
And of course, you know what followed that. Mm -hmm. So it's 18 years in length. It breaks down into four, seven, and seven-year segments. There's a four-year crisis or bottoming phase, which I think is about to begin. There's a seven-year recovery phase with moderate price rises. There is a seven-year accelerating phase that leads to a top. And uh, if you read the book by my friend Phil Anderson, The Secret Life of Banking and Real Estate, Phil credits Fred Harrison in his book, Boom Bust, for tracing history to find this cycle. Let's look at it. Here it is, straight from uh, Harrison. And back when I first learned about this, we were back here. And back here, where I have my pointer, is uh, where I bought the place I'm in now, which is multiplied in value by four times. And I said to Phil, if you add seven years, is the next top then in 2016? Because that's the year of the presidential election. I think a pro-business candidate will get elected. So this makes sense. One confirms the other. So what happens is after seven years of recovering from the shock of the down period, people moderately buy real estate. And after seven years, they figure it's okay to jump in. So then the seven-year accelerating phase starts, of which the last two years he calls the winner's curse. The last two years, and uh, that would be this year and last year, 21 and 22. And so I then said to Phil, then the top should be 2023 which is next year, but you, you look at the news, Larry, and you talk to people about real estate or you, know, you see what is going on. The average house was on the, on the market for only 18 days, and people were buying houses sight unseen, houses where the ground hadn't, hadn't even been broken yet. That's now uh, starting to crumble, and prices are starting to, to, to decline. So 2023, 24, 25, and 26 should be somewhat – difficult for real estate in that prices will fall. So that's the four year period, which means we don't start, we're not back here yet until 2027. And my, my point in this, other than it being a cyclical curio that tends to work, is that a lot of people base their consumer spending on the inflated value of their real estate, of their homes. They take out second mortgages. It gives them great confidence. If you bought a place for a million bucks and it's now worth two, you feel you can afford that uh, additional car or to uh, redo the kitchen or whatever. So look at the condition we're in now with the higher prices in inflation and then try to imagine that evaporating. So I don't think uh, this, of course, will hit disposable income. And as uh, my friend in uh, Europe, uh, Felix Zuloff, who was the most successful fund manager in Europe in the 90s, said – that uh, analysts have not really started to cut their estimates yet. They cut their price targets on stocks when they started to come down. So I think you're going to see uh, a rough earnings season coming up. Um, I'll mention a couple of names in a minute, but the that is the real estate cycle. Here's a sign of a top. That's mortgage payment as percentage of income is now higher than 0708. So here you see 0708, and here you see where we are right now, that's mortgage payment as a percentage of income. So you could say mortgage payments are up or income is down or some combination of both. So this is uh, uh, not a sign of people being able to afford real estate. So another sign of a real estate type top, home purchases are getting canceled at the highest rate since 2020. This comes from my friends at Redfin in uh, London. That's now almost as high as it was back in uh, 2020. So cancellation of home purchases from a low down here of about 10%, we're up to 16.1. And that was in July of this year. Mm -hmm. and here's another sign. Record share of home buyers make offers sight unseen. Well, look at this, 2015, 2017. So December 2020. Now, th this data is about a year and a half old. So... That, I'm convinced, is coming down right now. I don't have the latest numbers in front of me. So this I just wrote up and put in Forbes this morning. Uh, going back, these are miscellaneous developments of which cryptocurrencies are one. I met with Matthew Mellon, who is the backer of Bitcoin, who I think multiplied his own wealth about seven or eight times. So uh, by his involvement in Bitcoin, 
And when I met him, he said he's getting a bit frustrated with the guys he's working with, working with software engineers. And I said, I know what you mean. But he said the government has contacted me about creating a government coin. And I was waiting for this. Governments will not pass up this opportunity to have their own coin so they can trace all transactions. So they said to him, they started negotiating with him about uh, him. We got to pay a few bills. Stay with us with that thought with Mr. Mellon. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, folks. Give us a few minutes, four minutes, and we'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, for back, folks, speaking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, about Bitcoin. And Bill Mellon, you want to continue, uh, Bill? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> Matthew Mellon backed Bitcoin. Matthew, sorry. He told, yeah. me, he told me that they are... The government contacted him about creating a government cryptocurrency, which is something I had expected. So I said to him, when I thought about it, I said, you know, right now it's the Wild West. It's like those periods in the United States when banks could issue their own currencies, and some banks were well run and the currencies were sound and others were not. And my guess is that when the government comes in with rules and regulations, that's going to sink a lot of the smaller cryptos. But you have to remember, they're the government. They can offer incentives that private industry cannot. Like if you pay your taxes with the gov new government currency, you can deduct 1% from your payment. Uh, I had dinner with a client who just flew up from the Bahamas one week ago, Friday night in New York. And he said, Bill, do you remember that you said 
what I just said? And I said, yes. He said, in the Bahamas, you can pay in U.S. dollars, Bahamian dollars, or a local new government cryptocurrency. If you use that, you get a discount. So it's already started. So I think that the, my boss once taught me, he said, shorter term, the market movements are supply and demand imbalances, which you can measure with technical analysis. But longer term, it's more fundamental. So tell me what's going to happen in two, three, four years, and I'll give you the ideal investment strategy. <laughs> so I, I think the big fundamental that is depressing uh, cryptos right now and causing it to go sideways in a range is the waiting for this, uh, this to, to, to occur. And when it does occur, I think Ethereum and Bitcoin will still be there, but a lot of the smaller cryptocurrencies will not be able to compete, and they'll just be uh, submerged. They'll be, it's, they'll, they'll go the way of the Packard and the Duesenberg and the uh, Studebaker, okay. uh, to borrow an analogy from the automobile industry. So People. that's what I think is happening there. And you know, I, I have uh, two friends. They're they're setting up a 24-hour, uh, we never close, seven-day a week, cryptocurrency channel that's going to be online. And they they tell me there was, was there was a 24-hour cryptocurrency event, live band, fresh food, music for 24 hours. And he met uh, met a 30-year-old guy who's got 10 million dollars, and he met a 22-year-old who's got 8 million dollars. And I said, did you meet any eight-year-olds who have 22 million dollars? Because that's <laughs> what I expected to hear next. I said, you know, uh, this that is a sign. There's an old saying. You know it's a top when too many stupid people are making too much stupid money. And yeah. I think that was the case. Wow. Oh, that is, that is the case. And right. there are guys who came on the Internet who are preaching and bragging about all the money they made. They seem to think that happens every day, that it's natural. And the same guys are now, which like uh, – uh, you know, I made a million bucks in the stock market and how I lost a million bucks in the stock market. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's – my fundamental take on cryptocurrencies, and I'm telling you, I've gone buggy with my uh, own cycles program. If you extract or compute all of the daily, weekly, and monthly cycles in cryptocurrencies and you print it out, you wait a month or wait a week and run it again, the, the links of the cycles are all different, which tells you that the market is too unsettled, it's too new, there's not enough price data to really make any accurate predictions. That makes good sense, yeah. Wow. And the other, the other fundamental that um, has developed, uh, I, I spent my first, what did, let me think, was it five, I, how, I, how, three to five years out of school doing fundamental research for the life insurance industry. And so it's an industry I know uh, pretty well. And by statute, they have to keep, I think it's 70, I think it's 70 percent, maybe it's 80 of their liquid funds in bonds. And during the 70s, when rates went up to 15%, do you know what would have happened if they marked those to market? The insurance companies would have disappeared. Now, yes, they, buy right. the, they buy the highest quality bonds, and they hold them to maturity. And also, they may very well have hedging programs. So, Larry, I think you can agree. I'm trying to think of one successful hedging program that's been run by a very big company. I, I can't think of any. Uh, mm -hmm. they, could buy, they could buy the ETF TBT because that trades 3 million shares a day and mm -hmm. that increases 2 to 1 as bonds decrease. So number one, you know, I remember the 70s and this was the case. Uh, interest rates went to 15%. And remember, yeah. on, on, if you mark to market, all the major insurance companies were insolvent. Uh, what's happening is, as you may have read, uh, death rates have jumped dramatically. They're up 40 percent, 40 percent, and actuaries have a very uh, good track record. At, uh, they, they, they can uh, anticipate death claims. Well, now they're getting bombed with death claims, and the bond market is down. So I think the next financial crisis on a fundamental basis may be within the insurance industry, where the government has to step in. And there are you know, a couple things that are certain. The sun comes up in the morning, and people always pay their insurance premiums. That's one thing I learned in the uh, insurance industry. And um, as uh, one executive said to me, to mess up an insurance company, you not only have to be stupid, you must have malice. And he said they're great cash machines because people always, mm -hmm. always, uh, always pay their insurance premiums. And it's like when the cell phone boom started in the 90s, and I was in Abu Dhabi. 
And, uh, you know, well, Bill, explain to us the fundamentals. You bought a lot. I said, the fundamentals of people like to walk around talking on a cell phone. I said, that's the fundamental. <laughs> and so <laughs> what do you want me to tell you, you know? Yeah. In China, so everybody I, gets a cell phone from the government. There's oh, no cash anymore. That. Everything's done through that telephone. I didn't know that. Wow. Oh, yeah. There's not even there's no there's no coins or paper money at all. It's all done on the telephones. Even the beggars get their telephones. Okay. Yeah. So that's another, you know, uh, way of looking at it, too, because it's coming in other countries. It's going to come here, too. I'm sure. Now, the effect of the Russian war, because I live in Vienna half the time, people, I don't have any special insight into it. But um, when we bought property in Vienna 19 or 20 years ago, we had an apartment, we bought a house. And people ask me why. Well, my wife's family was not in good health. So that's why she's an only child. That was one reason. But the other reason I knew from that 18 year real estate cycle, there was going to be a crash in real estate. And I didn't want to be buying into uh, a market and watch the market value sink below cost. The Vienna market, the Austrian market had no place to drop to because it had never run up. Uh, mm -hmm. People and they have a peculiar real estate habit, they will hold on to a property and they'll pass it from generation to generation. And there's the Black Woods is a very nice area. And uh, somebody mentioned to me that uh, nobody ever sells real estate in that area. They just buy it and they hold it and they, they never sell it. And the houses are built to last forever. Switzerland too. So it's not a very liquid market. So the Russians came in and they did me the great favor of boosting all our Austrian properties. And I had a, an American friend, an American mathematician, who has a girlfriend, had a girlfriend, who's a Russian lawyer. And the only thing she did was make arrangements for Russians to come into Austria, getting them uh, visas, opening up bank accounts. So that has mm -hmm. now started again. And uh, real estate prices are now up year over year in Dubai, 89%. Prices have almost doubled. And wow. that is Go, I mean, the minute I heard this, this has bailed a lot of my friends out of their Dubai property because there was supposed to be a World Expo or something like one of the. Okay. I'm gonna, you have to can you stay with us? Another, we've got some questions, but let's sure. finish the story about Dubai. I'm certainly interested in that. We'll be right back, folks. Bill Meridian Cycles Research. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, do you want to continue, please? And I have a few questions at the end of the show, so please go yeah, ahead. Yeah, well, the Russians, uh, their favorite place in Dubai, uh, in uh, the UAE is Dubai, not Abu Dhabi. This is the commercial hub. And I'm telling when I lived there, I think there was not one month or week that went by when some Russian was found floating face down in a canal or in the water offshore. And so um, the other thing the Russian war has done, there's now a programmer shortage. Because most of the coders a lot of guys use, like I'm on the board of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, a lot of those guys now don't have guys to do their coding because they were in Ukraine or in Russia. And I was negotiating with a Serbian company, and they said, Bill, it's unbelievable. The salaries have just jumped enormously. Uh, you know, you've not only got the Internet of Things, you not only, only have the metaverse – and uh, all the software that's in existence needs maintenance, needs changing and upgrading. But now you've got this uh, war, which has taken a lot of these people out of the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also wanted to say that a Russian friend of mine translated Putin's speech to me when I was in Vienna. And uh, well, actually, uh, it was after I left Vienna, it was by phone. And she told me that what he said was, uh, we are, you know, believe in the family unit here. We believe in safe borders. Uh, we believe in safety in the streets. And uh, we believe in the integrity of the family. We're not going to go for any uh, uh, woke philosophies or uh, gender transition or anything like that. In other words, he sounded like, uh, I guess, like Ronald Reagan would have sounded, you know, many years ago. So I thought that was quite interesting to hear that from her. So hmm. – Anyway, just to – so I'm just finishing up what was uh, last Friday's presentation. But right now, we are in option expiration week in October, just to shift over to the markets. And you will notice that Monday, over the last 40 years, in option expiration week in this month has been the strongest day. And overall, you see – you look at the graph at the, the line at the bottom. It has been an up week. Strong mm -hmm. on Monday, sort of flat on Tuesday, weak on Wednesday, but strong on Thursday and a little off on Friday. That's this week. Now, next week, of course, is post-OPEX week, and we get the reverse. Now, the, the red bar, by the way, is the odds that the market will be up on that day, which you read over here. So that's about 60 percent on uh, Monday, and that's about 50 percent on Tuesday and so forth. The blue bar – is the percentage gain. So here you see the the, uh, the number had actually been negative on Monday, and the green bar, which is what I prefer to look at, is the expected return. In other words, it is the odds that the market will go up multiplied by the percentage change gives you the expected return. And you'll notice it's negative, 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 positive, and negative. So that will take us into, uh, let me see, the 24th will be this day right here. The 27th of October is the average low in any year in the Dow Jones Industrial Average since about 1915. It is also the beginning of the buy in October, sell in May period. Now, wh whenever I speak about October, it is the single most volatile month. It has brought the biggest number of one-day declines, and it usually closes on the upside. And let me see. I think Sentiment Trader 
has done some work, and I know Lowry's has done work on these up and down days. You can measure them in volume, in breadth, or in price. I prefer price because volume has become very distorted as we've moved toward dec decimalization. And so bottoms are made of numbers of down thrusts and up thrusts, and that's what we're saying. So this is a bottoming process. So I'm pretty certain that the market is going to be higher one month from now. And according to my one four ten year cycle, which I think I showed you last time, but I can, uh, if I can find it again, because now I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a document that's not part of the presentation. But let me try and find it. The one four ten year cycle has bottomed, and here is the summation of those three cycles. Wow! And right now we are about we're, we're about here. So. The market uh, did not bottom in uh, early October. It's two weeks later, but it all is not lost. And if you're looking at any uh, one stock to buy, the strongest stock in the month of October is usually Apple. It is extremely weak in September, down about 65% of the time, but up 70% of the time in October. So if you look at the relative strength with the market being down, do you know, at Larry, Apple's relative strength has been up all during this bear market. In other words, it's outperformed the average stock. In other words, it's down less than most stocks. And those are the stocks you want to own when the market bottoms. Mm -hmm. And we are in earnings week. And uh, let's see, we're the 17th. Now, the 18th, before the open, which means you can only act on it tonight, uh, I think Johnson & Johnson, J&J, &J, is going to sell off in their earnings announcement. Now, uh, this I call the earnings surprise method. Uh, if you get a, a concentration of cycles on the day that the company reports earnings, the effect is magnified. That's just <laughs> a statement of fact. If you read the Financial Analyst Journal, they'll tell you that volatility is greatest when companies report earnings because obviously not all earnings estimates are going to be right on the nose. Some will be low, some will be high, and people – the price adjusts accordingly. So a cycle which may only move a stock by half a percent during normal times may move at 3% on earnings day because all attention is focused on that stock. That's the method. So J&J, &J, I'm bearish on that. They report before the opening tomorrow. And um, uh, Goldman Sachs, GS, the same thing. Both look bearish. Uh, those are the only two I have because I haven't had enough time to go through the rest of them. Uh, Tesla, which I'm extremely interested in, has got both positive and negative cycles at the same time. So we may get what's called an outside day. You may get that stock all over the place on the 19th when they report. Or they report mm -hmm. after the close, so that would be the 20th. Uh, Bill, do you have sure. any uh, memories of uh, 1987 you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Uh, uh, I <laughs> Uh, I do because I was at Payne Weber, and uh, people always ask me, what, are, what did you like the best? I said, being at Payne Weber. And I said, you got to be kidding. You were managing a big portfolio in, in Abu Dhabi. I said, well, you know, I had a very good boss. Jim McCarthy is a very good guy, and we work well together. And um, the market was uh, rallying, and he and I – well, he and I, uh, Kirsten and Perdillo, the two strategists, they went bearish in January – Nine, mm -hmm. ten months too early. And as a result, all the calls were flooding through to us because they, they, these guys kept talking the market down. The market went from 1900 to 2700. We were still bullish and they were bearish. Mm -hmm. So this wow. set up a lot of resentment. Probably had something to do with me getting laid off. But anyway. <laughs> a the, lot of people uh, were laid off that, the day after that, that's for sure. Well, it took them a year to figure out what was going on. But anyway, the, uh, the market went up into August 25th. And Arch Crawford correctly said that that was going to be the high day. I remember very distinctly Bob Prechter and I disagreed with him in a phone call. And then when the market came down, I said, gee, I think you were right. And it bottomed on September 20th, 21st. And it rallied up. Now, the point at which, you know, he and I were both in New York, I said, I agree, it was October 5th or 6th, I think, was the high. I said, that day is a turning point. You've had a big move down, that's A. You had a big wave up, that's B. This is going to be a C wave. Now, if the A wave was as long as it was, the B wave, the C wave is going to be terrible. It was far worse than any of us thought. And it was. <laughs> hey, Bill, thanks for joining us, buddy. We'll have you on again sure, in a anytime. few weeks. If you, I yep. really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Again bring, you bet, buddy. Thanks a lot. Bill Thank Meridian, bye -bye. folks, Cycles Research. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted one of our little dear friends here uh, on the chart here today. This is the chart of the Dow E-mini. You can see Sunday night we made a low at the exact 61% retracement. And guess what happened right after that, folks? We had a little party, and it was not a tea party. It was a 382 party. As you can see, the first 382 retracement came in here, the second one came in here, and the third one came in there. Three in a row, bada bing, bada boom, virtually trading with the trend, very little risk involved, but uh, it's really a, an incredible sequence of events when you watch these 3A2 patterns. Now, tomorrow our guest is going to be none other than Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights on the 18th of October. Boy, what a day that was. Anyway, let's uh, keep in mind, folks, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you don't lose. So always use your stops. Keep your head about you and don't get involved with the stuff that's going on in the, you know, uh, in the market that you hear about that may or may not be true. Follow the charts. They'll lead you to the promised land, and that's really what you want to be looking for. So tomorrow, it's Jeff Huge. Uh, on Wednesday, we have um, uh, Adrian Togare. And on Thursday, I think we have Tim Bost. And on Friday, we have Paula Webb Douglas will be our guest. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless, and we'll see you on the flip side uh, tomorrow. So thank you for joining us. 
and uh, we're going to see you then. Bye-bye.